The cold came late that fall and the, and the songbirds were caught off guard. By the time the snow and wind began in earnest, too many had been suckered into staying and instead of flying south, they were huddled in people's yards, their feathers puffed for some modicum of warmth. Lori Moore is one of America's most admired literary writers. Her short stories and novels are fixtures on the bestseller list and rhapsodically praised by critics across the land. Recently, Lori Moore visited The Times, and we talked about her new novel, A Gate at the Stairs, and also about the 25 years she has spent living in Madison, Wisconsin, a part of the Midwest that Easterners and Westerners often see only from the window of an airplane as they travel from one coast to the other. Lori Moore, a new novel, A Gate at the Stairs, published a rapturous reviews, including in the book review, you're on the bestseller list. How does it feel? It's been, what, 15 years since your last novel came out? It's been 15 years. I wanted to sort of scoop up everything I thought was sort of interesting about Madison and Wisconsin and a university town and the countryside outside of it. Have you been hearing from Wisconsin <laughs> readers of your novel? Oh, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I have heard from some. And some are unhappy? Do they think some, you're satirizing them? Some are unhappy. You know, there are a lot of people, you know, for instance, in the Times Review, there was a, the use of the word flyover, and Midwesterners don't like that. And so then they've, they, and I've used it myself in, in fiction. I, I use the word flyover. But I've become enough of a Midwesterner where, I, you know, I can, be, I can understand the offense of that. And, and when someone else uses it, I, I'd start to bristle myself, except I use it all the time. How did you find your heroine? Were you in the front of a classroom or walking that lovely campus one day and saw someone who might be Tassie, your, your narrator? No, that's a very interesting thought. I've never, no, I've never seen anyone who might be her. She's in my mind very clearly, um, but I've never seen anyone in the real world that was her, and so I, so I felt I had to kind of create her and keep company with her, and she is a sort of every woman sensibility to some extent, given the specifics of her background and circumstances, but I, I, was, I felt very close to her for very many years, so it was hard to, hard to give the book up and to some extent. How many years was it? Well, it was off and on, off and on for about 10 years. Did you begin the novel then before September 11th? There's a I started with Tassie a little bit before, before 9-11. Because 9-11 forms much of the atmosphere and backdrop of it this didn't, novel. Right. The novel didn't really settle into what year it was going to be in until, until later. Now, you're also a substantial, often quite brilliant literary critic when you write about other fiction writers. Do you then become Professor Moore, or are you still <laughs> the empathetic novelist? Do you inhabit the skin of the, the novelists you write about? Um, Try to figure out how they're doing, why they're doing what they do? Sometimes, sometimes. So when you do a review, you get to sort of look back over the previous books, and you get to sort of take a little course in that author, and then write a kind of paper on it. Who's a writer? Ex exceedingly different from yourself, whom you admire but know you could never be. Oh, the sort of opposite uh, writer of Laurie Moore. Oh, well, I, I always, it's the same answer for who do I admire. <laughs> I always say Alice Munro. I think of her as, as writing very differently from me, and I, I could never do what she does. But I just love what she does. I'm in awe of it. Do you have any idea who your diverse readers are they, are they women are they men everybody I feel th I feel they're both I mean I think I I think some some people might assume my readers are mostly women but I I think they're both um, I don't know I th maybe maybe everybody has mostly women readers that has historically been the case women do the reading historically yeah. it's been 70% pretty constant through the decades